Hey guys, Sarah here. So today I thought I would go over some commonly used shorthand and acronyms in corn snakes. Uh, it came to my attention the other day when I was talking to someone who's a, kind of a customer, kind of also a friend, uh, and I used the term WC because I was talking about the grandparents of the snake that she got. And she said, well, I don't know what WC means. And um, it means wild caught. But I sometimes forget that sometimes people don't know what I'm talking about when I'm talking. So I thought that this would make a really good, hopefully somewhat shorter video. Uh, I'll just go over all these acronyms and what they mean so that you guys, whether you're a beginner or maybe a more experienced keeper, might learn something about the shorthand that we use in corn snakes relatively often. The sale on my website for uh, t-shirts and masks and stuff like that is still going on. 30% off if you use the code TD30. And that is going until the end of the year. It'll be 11.59 p.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time. So if you are wanting to get something, uh, it's a little bit late to get something for Christmas right now. Obviously, uh, this is going to be going up on Christmas Eve, so I probably won't be able to get it to you overnight, but um, that deal is going to be going on until the end of the year if you're interested. I have, like I said, uh, some masks and I have notebooks as well and I have t-shirts. I have white and you can get it in tie-dye custom colors. So uh, just check that out for me and if you uh, like corn snakes and corn snake content, please consider subscribing. It really helps out my channel a lot and it really helps like boost my morale as well. Uh, as many of you know who have watched this channel for even a little while here, uh, I kind of like went kind of dipped and wasn't really sure if I was going to continue doing educational content and um, I have changed my mind about that. I am going to continue doing educational content uh, which is kind of why I'm doing this video here. Uh, I originally, I'm not going to get into the details. Anybody who's been here for a few months knows the drama that I went through uh, with some people a few months ago and I've just decided that it's not worth quitting my channel just because of some drama. So I'm going to go ahead and jump into the video. Thank you for considering subscribing. I do appreciate it. I put out corn snake content every single week. So I broke down the categories of these, uh, I say acronyms and their shorthand. I broke them down into categories. There are six categories, morphs, rodent related or food related, uh, genetics related, uh, ailments related, uh, as in like sicknesses and stuff, housing related or enclosure related, and just some sort of miscellaneous stuff. And so uh, I'm going to go in order. Now, there's this is not a complete list of every single thing, but this is a pretty decent list of commonly used shorthand in corn snakes. So if, like I said, if you're new to the hobby or if you're just not sure what some of this means, I hope that this will clear it up for you. I'm going to start with the morph section just to get it out of the way quickly because uh, um, I, I do a lot of other morph things, and so if you're interested in learning details about different morphs, uh, check out my playlist that's called Corn Snake Morph Deep Dives. I go through so many different morphs, and I haven't done them all yet, but I have a very good chunk of them done, and I'm actually going to be redoing some of those videos as well pretty soon. Um, the ones that don't have the like pictures up on the screen and stuff. So starting out, these morphs are in no particular order. It's just in like the order that I thought of them in. Um, I'll start out with one I've already mentioned. Uh, if you see WC and they're talking about a corn snake, uh, that means wild caught. Uh, and I know that that seems kind of obvious when you think about it, but uh, like I said, this friend of mine didn't know what that meant. And um, that is something that we use really commonly. We'll say WC instead of typing out wild caught. Uh, another one that you'll see is jungle. Um, and I didn't know what jungle meant when I first purchased my first jungle corns. Uh, I worked in a pet store back then. This was about 10 years ago now. And, um, there were two jungle corn snakes that came in and they were both actually, uh, albino or amelanistic, uh, which I'll get into that in a minute as well. Uh, but they were not your typical, like normal jungles. However, uh, a jungle corn is a hybrid between a corn snake and a king snake. So, uh, and usually, usually when they just say jungle, they mean the California king snake, but sometimes you'll see Mexican jungle, and that's usually like the black Mexican king snake, or they'll, they'll, they'll use other terms, uh, to mean, they'll say something jungle. So like I said, uh, Mexican jungle or, um, 
Florida jungle, uh, which is the Florida king snake, or or whatever. There's different kinds of jungle. So if you see the term jungle, it means it was some kind of king snake. And if you don't see anything else other than just jungle, like you don't see something like I said, like Florida or Mexican or any of these other precursor terms uh, to different kinds of king snakes, then uh, it's probably just going to be your California king snake and uh, corn snake cross. Um, blood. A lot of people, I actually saw not too long ago, someone say, why do you keep saying blood? Why do you keep referring to a corn snake as blood? Uh, that is short for blood red, which is um, typically now known as the combination between diffused and mask. Uh, basically, it's just a corn snake that doesn't have a side or belly pattern on it. Uh, that's what a blood is, blood red corn snake. That's what that is. Uh, Zep was one that I just saw. Uh, Zep is short for red zeppelin, which is actually a type of amelanistic corn snake that came out of a pure Okatee line. Um, these red zeppelins were originally found by Howard Sherman, and they are just kind of their own line of amelanistic. They have been bred out to other amelanistics, uh, and it is technically the same mutation, but this is a known locality only uh, mutation that uh, is kind of uncommon now to, to find, but more and more people are getting them. Uh, hypo is one. Um, it's short for hypomelanistic. Uh, and if you understand kind of the terms and breaking it down, like hypo versus hyper, um, hypo is the opposite of hyper, and hyper means more of, hypo means less of. Uh, melanistic is like melanin, which is the dark pigment in the skin. Uh, so hypomelanistic or hypomelanism, um, hypo for short, pretty much just means a slight reduction in the melanin in some way, shape, or form. So these snakes are going to, instead of have like the jet black uh, in their borders and on their checkers, it's going to be more of a brown or maybe a gray and sometimes even a tan instead. The next one on the list is anery, which is short for anery threistic, which is, I know, kind of a mouthful, but essentially it just means that the, the A in the front of the term uh, means a lack of, and or like a complete removal of, I guess I should say. And erythrian is a red pigment uh, in the skin, basically. So anerythriastic just means having no red pigment. These snakes uh, are going to be just a gray and black, um, or maybe black and white, and sometimes they'll develop some yellow as well, but they are just not going to uh, to have any of that red pigment. Sometimes you'll see some pinks if it's like in a, in a coral line, which I'm not going to get into right now, uh, but just kind of giving you an idea, if you see the term A-N-E-R-Y, we do not mean Avery. I know a lot of people will sort of correct the term to Avery, which I did that in the very beginning when I was first keeping two because Anery was not a term that I understood. And so uh, A-N-E-R-Y is the correct um, lettering for that. And it just means, uh, and normally we were also referring to anery type A. There's multiple different types of anery. Well, really only two types of anery in corn snakes. Um, but anery just means it's lacking that red pigment. Um, amel, I'll go ahead and do that while we're here. Again, we have that suffix of A and it's short for amelanistic. Uh, so we have the lacking of melanin. Uh, so we had hypomelanistic, which was a slight reduction in the melanin. And now we have amelanistic, which is a complete reduction in melanin, which means the melanin is non-existent. And these snakes are going to be what you typically call albino. Um, some people will call them red albino. Um, and some people just call them amel, which is the most common term. Uh, and some people, I believe, call them like lacking black or no black or something like that. But amel is going to be the common shorthand for your amelanistic corn snakes. Uh, some of the other ones that are a little less common are SK. Uh, that means sun-kissed. Sun-kissed is a type of hypo, uh, hypomelanistic, but um, it's a little bit different than your typical hypo. It also changes the pattern a little bit. Uh, another one is uh, SL, which is short for scaleless. You can kind of imagine what that's like. There are scaleless corn snakes. And the last one in the morph category is TS, which is short for tequila sunrise. And uh, I haven't done a video on tequila sunrise yet. That is in the works. Uh, but tequila sunrise is basically a um, type of ultramel anery and snow that um, had some possible hybrid background, but we're not really sure. 
uh, but they have a really uh, light sort of whiting out in their uh, saddles and in their um, in their coloration overall. We call it frosting, uh, or at least some people call it frosting. Some people don't call it frosting, but uh, frosting is another term that I will go ahead and put in here to sort of explain to you guys if you want. But um, yeah, that's what TS means. It's just a certain line of corn snake that mostly are ultra male anneries and I'm not going to go into all these different morph terms right now because that's a lot and this video is already 10 minutes long. I cannot make a short video. It's not possible. <laughs> so I'm going to move on to the um, sort of rodent shorthand things. Um, if you see FT or F slash T, uh, that stands for frozen thawed um, and pretty much it just means you buy the rodent when it's frozen and you thaw it out. That's That's sort of an easy one. Uh, PK is another one that's not quite as common in corn snakes, but it is seen more in like the ball python world and stuff like that. And I just thought I would mention it here because it's something that is said once in a while. PK stands for pre-killed, uh, which is, um, I know it seems similar to frozen thawed, but it's different in that the person would actually euthanize the rodent. And while the rodent is still warm, feed it to the snake. And this is a, a, a method to get the snake to eventually eat frozen thawed. A lot of snakes are very picky and will only eat live prey. So if you perhaps like, you know, knock out the rodent and the heart is still beating and stuff like that, but it's technically already dead, um, the snake will go ahead and eat it. And it's, it's a way to transition slowly from eating a fully live animal that's running around to eventually trans, you know, eventually a rodent that was frozen and now thawed. So just kind of giving you an idea there. Sorry, that was a little bit graphic. Um, I'm going to move on to some genetics terms, but there's only three of them. So just bear with me. And I know that a lot of just beginner keepers are not going to care too much about these terms. However, um, they are something that you're going to run into. So I figure you might as well know what they all mean. Uh, you might see the term uh, het, H-E-T, that is short for heterozygous. And all that really means is they're talking about a gene mutation that was only inherited from one parent and not both parents. That's all it means, uh, heterozygous. Um, and a lot of people will say you can't see a het, um, but in some cases you can. So I'm not gonna go into the details about how all that genetics works. All you need to know is if you see the word het, it just means that a gene mutation, something like AML or hypo or something like that was only inherited from one parent. So if they say, um, you know, it's het AML, that just means one parent was an AML. That's pretty much all it means. Um, and then Likewise, you'll also see pH a lot. You'll see something like pH amel or pH anery. Uh, pH actually stands for possibly het. So that means that there's a chance that it inherited it from one parent, but we're not 100% sure if it inherited it from one parent or not. It's possible that one parent uh, was also het for that gene mutation, and there's a 50% chance that it'll pass that gene mutation along. Uh, so if a parent was het amel and uh, then that, you know, the child snake is then going to have a 50% chance of possibly carrying that mutation. And so they just say possibly het, meaning there is a possibility that this gene mutation is in this snake uh, from one, one parent. Um, and then HOM or sometimes HOMO. Uh, I, I, when I first started in corn snakes, everybody was saying HOMO. H-O-M-O. -O. And I finally just started shortening it to H-O-M, home. Um, first of all, because het is shortened to only three. We don't say hetero. Uh, so I don't know why we would say homo. Um, so I have been shortening it to H-O-M. And I think a lot of people have kind of been following suit with that. I'm not saying that I was the first one to do it or anything. Uh, but I have constantly been just been using the HOM. And essentially what HOM means, it means homozygous. And that means that a snake got the G mutation that we're talking about from both parents and is going to be visually that mutation. So if it's homozygous for AML, it is going to visually be an AML. That's what that means. Um, next, I'm going to go on to the ailments section. Um, just some things that people may not quite know. An easy one though is regurge. That means regurgitation, which means the snake has thrown up. That's pretty much all it means. Um, URI is a, an upper respiratory infection. 
So URI, upper respiratory infection. Likewise, you'll see RI, which is just respiratory infection. So if you see RI, it means maybe they don't know if it's an upper or lower respiratory infection. Um, usually it's going to be an upper respiratory infection, but sometimes you get those lower respiratory infections. The lower respiratory infections are going to be probably more difficult to cure than the upper respiratory infections. And upper respiratory infections are a little bit more common. So we have RI or we have URI and a lot of people will use those interchangeably unless they know for sure that it's a lower respiratory infection. The last one on the list is crypto, which is a fatal disease. It's actually a parasite that the snake gets. It's, it's short for, let me see if I can pronounce this correctly, correctly, can't even pronounce correctly, correctly. Um, cryptosporidiosis, cryptosporidiosis. It's difficult for me to pronounce that. Um, but it's basically, it's a parasite and it can spread very easily to different reptiles and it is fatal. So unfortunately, if you have a snake that tests positively for crypto, you can test it through their, through their poop. Uh, at a vet clinic or in a couple of other places. Um, if a snake tests positively for that, it is best to put them down because it will infect other reptiles and it can affect more than just snakes. Uh, I'm not gonna linger on this for too long, but it is something that I thought that you should be aware of. If someone says, I believe your snake has crypto, that is a huge thing and it is definitely something that you need to act quickly on. Um, housing is the next one. So a lot of times people will use these shorthand terms to mean certain things and it's hard to know what they mean. Uh, housing UTH is one of them that stands for under tank heat or under tank heater. Um, and that's literally just a mat that you would put under the tank. Um, RUB, RUB, I think it stands for, um, really useful boxes <laughs> or something like that. It, it is a shorthand uh, that just basically means, um, you know, a, an enclosure that is a tub type of enclosure. Or um, I, I like to use like under bed storage enclosures um, for for my adults. And, you know, a lot of breeders will use that kind of thing. Uh, so that's, that's, that's essentially what RUB means, uh, is just an enclosure for the snake to live in that's made of plastic that's easy to stack or put into a rack system. Um, and then there's a shorthand B-R-U-M, broom which is short for brumation, or which is basically a type of hibernation for snakes. Um, it's not, a lot of people say it's not the same thing. Uh, I have said in the past that it kind of is the same thing, but it's kind of not. Uh, and I'm not going to go into details on that, but if you see B-R-U-M, uh, just kind of think hibernation if you're kind of a newbie and you don't really care too much about the difference between brumation and hibernation. Uh, last is the miscellaneous, and these are actually some of the more important ones. So uh, just sort of, if, if you've made it this far, I'm sorry this is so long, but uh, these are some of the more important ones that are going to be kind of common. Um, saddles. Saddles on a corn snake are the uh, blotches that are usually going to be the darker color of the two, the two main colors. So if you look at a corn snake, uh, you're going to see like three main like sections of pattern for the most part. You're going to see the background color, which is usually a light color. You're going to see the border color, which is usually the darkest color on this on the corn snake. And then you're going to see the saddle color, which is usually the darker of the like colors. So um, usually the saddle borders, the borders themselves are either going to be black, white, uh, or maybe like a gray, something like that. Um, but they're not going to be like a color. I don't see black, white, and gray as necessarily being colors. Uh, they're sort of like a lack of color. Each, each one of them, in my opinion, is kind of a lack of color. Uh, but if you're talking about the actual saddles, that's going to be not the background color, which is going to be the most prevalent color on the snake. It's going to be the other color. So when you're talking about a normal corn snake, your ground color is going to be like a, a tan or maybe an orange. And then the border color is usually going to be black and then the saddle color is going to be red or maybe a darker orange. Uh, so that's what the saddles are. And the saddles can get frosting, which is the next term that I wanted to mention. Um, frosting just means that the saddles get these white patches in them that um, are kind of unexplainable, but it's like a depigmentation within the saddle color. Um, there's only three more terms left, so stick with me. I'm sorry that this video is so long. Um, neo or neonate 
uh, that's basically just a baby, a hatchling, uh, one that just recently hatched, possibly one that hasn't even fed yet or had their first shed yet. Uh, it just means like it's like neonatal, like it's brand new, brand new baby. Um, the term herp, I know a lot of people make fun of people who talk about herps because it sounds like a disease, but uh, it's actually short for like herpetology, uh, which is essentially the study of like uh, reptiles, amphibians, stuff like that. Uh, so when they say, you know, I'm a herper or whatever, that just means that they, they sort of study, um, herpetology in a way, or, or they own, um, other types of herps, <laughs> which is kind of a weird way of looking at it. But if you see that, that's what it means. It just means some sort of a uh, reptile or amphibian, something like that. And the last one on the list is one that confused me for a very, very long time. And so I thought I would put it on here. Uh, anytime you see, something that says I have 1.2 Okatees or I have, uh, you know, 1.3.0 or I have 0 0.0.5. Uh, what does that mean? Uh, so that basically means how that they're trying to tell you how many gender wise that they have. The first number is the number of males. So if you see 1.2, that means one male. The second number means females. So if you see 1.2, that means two females. The last number, which there is not always a third number, but that means um, ones that are unsexed. So you might see something like, you know, 1.1.10 or something like that. And that, you know, let's say there this person is selling a an adult male and an adult female and 10 babies that they hatched and they haven't sexed those babies. So they know for sure that they have an adult male and an adult female, but they haven't like hatched. They don't, they haven't sexed any of the babies yet. So, um, they might say 1.1 because they know they have one male and one female and then 0.10 because they haven't sexed those babies yet. Uh, and again, a lot of people will sell trios. Uh, so they'll sell 1.2, which is one male, two females. So just giving you an idea of that. Um, thank you for watching this far in. I hope that you learned something. I do want to mention I have an announcement at the beginning of next year. I'm going to be kind of switching up the way that I do videos. I have a lot of video ideas and I would like to start kind of doing them in a cycle. So um, once a month, uh, you're going to get a morph deep dive. Once a month, you might get a video like this one. Uh, maybe once a month you'll get a Q&A, but most importantly, I'm actually going to start reviewing different corn snake books and that's going to happen once a month as well. I had no idea how many corn snake books were out there, uh, but I was looking on Amazon and there's like tons of them. I put all of the ones that I found in my Amazon cart and keep in mind, the majority of them were under $5 and I had like over $380 worth in my Amazon cart just from like basic corn snake books. So that's how many there are. Like divide about 350 by $5. That's how many corn snake books are just on Amazon. And I purchased some of them and I've started reading them and some of them are hilarious. I'm so excited to actually start reviewing these for you guys. So uh, thank you for watching. I will see you in the next video.